Welcome to my video. Just to let you know, I have no financial interest. To get new educational videos and updates, please subscribe to my channel. I'd be very grateful if you could please like and share this video, which I hope will give you a beneficial knowledge. You have to ask yourself four questions. Is it proptosis or enophthalmos? What degree? What is the cause? And how would you manage this condition? The most common cause in exams and in practice is thyroid eye disease. So you have to study it well. The other common cases are the carotid cavernous fistula, enophthalmus, and due to the blowout fracture. So you have to exclude pseudoproptosis by asking the patient about his glasses in the upper left um, photo the patient is very high myope this gives pseudoproptosis in the upper right there is cysis bulbi in the right eye and pro uh, pseudoproptosis due to high um, myopia in the left eye in the lower left there is artificial eye in the left eye which gives pseudoproptosis and in the lower right there is blowout fracture on the left side from the above view you have to inspect the patient from front sides and above the upper picture is thyroid eye disease and lower one is blowout fracture on the left side you have to inspect the chemosis upper left corkscrew vessels upper right and lid retraction in the lower photo measurement from the lateral orbital rim till the apex of the cornea by transparent ruler and the patient has to be in the upright position and the ruler is parallel to the horizontal meridian the horizontal disparity to measure from the midline till the, the limbus on both sides to exclude any non-axial proptosis and the vertical disparity from the lateral cancers till the pupil and put a reference with two rulers Hertz's exosomometer, you have to read the number on the base and make make it wide first and the support part which is the blue corner you have to put it on the lateral uh, cancers you have to be on the same level of the patient and put the support on the lateral cancers you make it wide first and you look with one eye at a time to see the uh, corneal apex so first we make it wide and um, try not to injure the eye of the patient you can put topical anesthetic and the patient has to look straight ahead and you put your middle finger supporting the support on the lateral cancers of the patient to make it supported at the lateral orbital rim as shown in the video here and you look with the left eye to the right eye of the patient you see the red mark put it on the white mark and then see where is the apex of the cornea then on the left side of the patient you look with the right eye and you put the red mark on the white mark which is at about 18 millimeters when the red mark comes on white mark then you can see where is the apex of the cornea and mostly above 21 millimeters is mostly proptosis in most traces there is other exosomometers like Nagel's exosomometers that measure the vertical disparity and Moritz uh, which avoid the paralactic movements a line between two lateral orbital rims and the globe is above this is proptosis in palpation you can feel the bony orbital rim pulsations and retro pulsion by pushing on the globe this video shows the 
pulsations and the corkscrew vessels of the carotid cavernous fistula now it appears on the you can see now the pulsations and the corkscrew vessels on the right side and if you look above the brow there is pulsations and if you put the cone of the stethoscope you can hear the bruit you can see now the pulsating exophthalmus due to the direct carotid cavernous fistula this is a case of neurofibromatosis type 1 which is having left pulsating exophthalmus due to absent greater wing of sphenoids you have to check the protective mechanisms the builds phenomena as shown in this video in the corneal sensation the leg of thalmus and the severe exposure here in this severe proptosis the cause as well you have to do other tests like the cranial nerve number two which is the pupil examination to exclude any relative afferent pupillary defect which means there is optic nerve compression by swinging light reflex and the motility to exclude third fourth and sixth cranial nerve uh, involvement then we check fifth and seventh cranial nerves as well and we have to exclude any exposure keratopathy like this severe case of exposure keratopathy which needs urgent management this was a thyroid eye disease patient and you have to measure the intraocular pressure as well to exclude any damage that can occur to the optic nerve so in summary the most common disease is grievous or pitopathy and this flow chart is summarizing the management if it is mild we do conservative measures if it is moderate to severe we have to do intravenous steroids or radiotherapy if it is site threatening we have to um, be very quick and do urgent orbital decompression with or without intravenous steroids and all the patient has to stop smoking and the, there is a link for this uh, in the comments the four secrets or four steps is inspection palpation and protective mechanisms and the cause by excluding any vascular inflammatory endocrine or neoplastic causes so I hope by this video you find the orbital cases in exams and in practice a little bit easier. And special thanks for Mr. Mohammed Hosni and Dr. Hisham Gharib, Dr. Mohammed Ibrahim Saleh and Dr. Mohammed Farooq for contribution. Thanks for watching.